Hi right, guys, this is gonna serve as the intro video for the Honda Talon Inferno heater uh, review video and installation. So when you're watching this video, you're actually gonna see it kind of in reverse chronological order. This time now, uh, it is almost Thanksgiving of 2019 and I've had the, the heater installed for about two months now. And I really wanted to wait to do this until I had an opportunity to use it and see how well it works. So now that the temperatures have cooled down, I've had the opportunity to test it out a couple times, even without, as you can see, a cab enclosure, I can absolutely recommend it. Uh, it puts out a really, really good amount of heat, uh, even not having it trapped inside of an enclosure to keep you warm. Um, so when you're just riding on a cool day, uh, I really like to open this vent on the driver's side to, to blow it onto my hands, uh, to keep my hands warm. And then the lower ducts down there do a pretty good job of directing heat just up at you uh, and on your legs and feet if you want it down there. So in short, yes, I do recommend this. Um, I also, in this section of the video, wanted to touch on a few things that you'll need to know before you start your install. So those things are to have some sort of a method to clamp your heater hoses off with. And what I did is I went with two of these uh, heater hose, pliers, clamps, whatever you want to call them. I'll have links to in the description to these. Uh, you'll want to get some additional coolant uh, to put back into the machine after you splice into your um, heater hoses because you are going to lose some coolant that way. I went back with the Honda uh, HP 5050 or Honda Pro HP 5050. Uh, so that's what I went with there. I ended up just buying four more quarts of it to have a solid gallon. And I think I ended up using about two and a half with what I spilled out. Uh, another thing you'll want to have is um, a two and a half inch hole saw. And what you'll need that hole saw, I just have the Milwaukee hole dozers. I got several of those. The reason you'll want to have a two and a half inch is that's the size of the holes that you'll need to make for the louvers. Uh, so these holes here on the four different locations. Uh, so those are kind of my top three tips to, to make sure you've got ready to go when you're uh, going to install this heater. Uh, and the next part of this video will be the actual installation process itself. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have questions. Hey guys, uh, it's been a little bit since I put a video out, uh, but I've been on kind of a little bit of a hiatus. Had a lot of things going on, uh, just personal life type of things, but uh, I'm finally getting some time to get back out in the shop. And I've got a new accessory uh, that I'm going to put on the Talon. This one is actually kind of a winter prep accessory. Uh, it's actually a heater. Uh, so this is a Talon specific accessory. Uh, it's an Inferno cab heater. The company that makes these is UPI. Uh, and I'll have a link to everything in the description. Uh, I think currently you can only buy this at SideBySideStuff.com. Um, but I'll, I'll put the link to uh, UPI as well as SideBySideStuff just so you can see where you get everything. Uh, but a quick overview as far as what comes with this thing. They give you a dash switch panel. In just a second, I'll show you where that's going to go. Uh, they do give you a rocker switch. So this is a uh, three-position technically rocker switch. So down is low, middle is off, up is high. Uh, a nice wiring harness goes right here. It has the, um, the carling switch quick connect on the back of it. So basically, instead of having individual plugs, you just plug the whole switch into that. And then it goes right into... I think it's the factory 12-volt uh, cigarette outlet, uh, but we'll get into that in a second for the install. This is the blower motor. Um, it's going to go up underneath the dash. It uh, does have instructions. Some ducting uh, hose does come with it. These are the adapters and splitters uh, where you actually plumb in the line. ESPN told me something. Uh, where you plumb, plumb the line in uh, to run your coolant through um, the... Uh, uh, the radiator for the blower motor and then these are the vent caps where the hot air is actually going to come out uh, so like i mentioned there is going to be some uh, disassembly involved with this in my case i'm going to have to take off this lower windshield uh, but ultimately what we're looking to do is take the hood off and then also this piece um, and then we will need to take the center skid off and we will also i believe need to get in here and take this piece of the console off but i have to verify that the switch plate is this. Uh, this is a plastic, it looks like it's CNC cut. 
but it is actually going to replace this warning label, um, which is riveted in. And we'll drill those rivets out and this is gonna replace it and I'll use the switch location they provide. So step one of this entire process uh, is gonna be remove your hood. And then the second thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to have to remove this cover back here. In my case, I've got the Super ATV flip out windshield. So I'm gonna have one additional step uh, and that's gonna be to just remove this lower windshield uh, piece here. That's a pretty quick thing to do. I'm actually just gonna remove it from these clamps. That way I don't have to readjust all my clamps and I can just put it back on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that um, and we'll jump right back in. So to remove this cover here, these are five millimeter Allen head screws. Uh, it's a combination of these as well as some push -tops. Push them pliers, you can go through, or you can use a flathead screwdriver to get the push pins out. And there are also some, I think these are 10 millimeter bolts on the sides. Now that we've got our cover removed, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move to the center skid plate but the blower motor is going to mount roughly here so i may need to shift around a few wires uh, we'll see how that goes when we get to that point um, so for the skid plate i think those are 10 millimeter as well i'll double check that in a second and confirm that with you but really the only section we need to move is the center skid so we don't need to remove the whole thing okay we've got our skid plate off everything's a 10 millimeter that's a hex head and then there are also four plastic push pins that, uh, that are on either side up here. You will have one of these 10 millimeter hex heads. It's kind of like a shoulder bolt. Uh, it's the one that goes right here in the center. And so it's gonna be a little bit different than the rest of your uh, hardware. The ones in the uh, dome washers don't have that shoulder on them. So just keep track of that one when you go to put everything back together. Then one thing I would recommend doing with this, uh, A, wash this while it's off, just because you've got it off, and B, take all of your hardware, clean the washers up really well, and anti-seize every single one of those uh, bolts that you took off. Reason being is they use nuts on this frame, or the frame's tapped one or the other, I didn't look that close. Regardless, it's not a self-tapper, so put yourself some anti-seize on there, so that way in the future, when you take this thing off and put it back on, you're not gonna shear bolts off and have them stuck in there in no way. Uh, well, I don't say no way, not a good way to put everything back in there. Uh, you can always put some self tappers in, but best just to take care of the threads now so you don't have to worry about it later. So next we're gonna drill the center of these rivets out so that we can put our new switch plate in. I'm using a 764 cent drill bit to do that. I'd have really wanted that thing to stay on there. Now before we go to the next step and actually put the switch plate in, uh, you can tell that the holes are going to line up for one, two, three, and I think this corner one will as well. Yeah, four of those will, this one will not, and then we'll need a couple new ones here. So what I'm going to do is line these holes up and take a little sharpie to the locations where the new rivet holes are going to be. Like I said, the corners are going to line up. And what we're going to do is grab a 3 16 bit and put a couple holes in there for our, our new locations. Now you can see we've got the existing holes. We're going to use these four and this fifth one's not going to matter. But what I'm going to do is take this 316 cent drill bit, 
to get these holes opened up for our new rivets. And I'm shifting gears just a second. And I'm not going to come in here and drill these yet because I'll, what I'll do is I'll put the first four rivets in. Then I'll come in and drill those while it's in place just so I don't have misaligned holes. Now that we've got our outside four in, this is what I was talking about coming in now and doing these just to keep everything nice and lined up. Now for the next part of this install, we're going to keep working on the dash and we're going to cut out all four of these switch holes. And yes, you can go ahead and do all four because this kit's actually pretty nice and they include uh, basically just little faceplate covers that go in the empty slots so that you can get everything cut out now and then when you're ready to add something later, uh, it's basically already there and ready to go. You just take the, the cap out and put a new switch in. You can do this with a razor blade knife. I'm actually going to use an oscillating multi-tool. Uh, just with one of these regular, I don't know if this is a wood or metal, yeah, it's a, well, either or, it's a wood or metal blade. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the long cuts with this, and then it's too wide to, to do these shorter ones. So I'm just going to get the long ones done, then use a razor knife for the top. So I've got now everything riveted in and then I've also got the holes out and the caps that I was referring to are these pieces here. So those will just fill the empty spot. What these are, they're just, uh, just little plastic fillers and you take them into place, push them right in, gives you a nice finished look that is uh, ready to be used down the road when you're ready to add some additional accessories. So that's that heater switch is going to go there of course and we'll move on to the next step now the next piece that we're going to work with is going to be the included wiring harness the black part is what goes onto the back of the rocker switch this plug is what is going to plug directly into the blower motor here we're not going to worry about that yet then this is what is going to tap into the back of the 12 volt cigarette outlet uh, it's probably going to be a little difficult for me to get this on video but i will shine some light in there and see how well we can uh, actually see it uh, so let me grab that and things are going to be a bit dirty, but I think we should be able to show that. Okay, so I can't really or couldn't really get the camera back in there to show you this, but this black plug right here, this is the one that you want. Uh, it's just going to have two wires going to it, a green one and a black one with a white stripe. And then like I said a second ago, we're going to plug included harness into that um, one end is going to go into the back of the 12 volt plug for your cigarette outlet and then just the other side will go into um, the the piece that you unplug that goes into the wiring harness and then this will uh, steal power off of that for the switch now for this next part of the install what we're going to do is we're going to work with the ducting and uh, I'm going to use basically the recommended locations that they specified in the instructions. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to cut two pieces of ducting at 16 inches a piece. I'm probably going to cut it at like 17 or 18 a piece. Uh, then there's going to be an additional piece cut at 24 inches uh, and another one at 36 inches. So in total you're going to have four of them because there are four ports on this where, you, or where it's going to blow hot air out. Um, overall, I haven't measured this to see how long it is, but depending on where you put 
your louvers. And again, that's up to you. There's no right or wrong place to do it. Just measure your overall ducting and make sure that you're going to have room to do it. I'm going to follow their recommendations just because I know it's going to work. Um, but I'm going to leave myself an inch or two extra on each piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fully extend these so it's not you know, accordioned up. Measure the length and then just take a razor knife and cut it off. All right, so I'm at this, the part of the install where I now have my duct holes uh, drilled in. This is with a two and a half inch hole saw. Again, two and a half inch, so make sure you have one of those. I uh, chose to use the locations that were recommended in the instructions. Uh, again, you don't have to use those locations, but I went ahead and did it just because I know it would work because I've obviously seen it in the instructions. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this center console is if you've installed any accessories and ran wires to the tunnel, um, drill slowly so you don't get into whatever accessory wires that you may have in there. Um, on the driver's side, I chose to put the defrost vent right here. Um, I do have the one of the switch panels available that has like three switch slots in it to put it right there if I ever wanted to do it, but I highly doubt that'll happen. And then the driver's side foot hole is going to be right there just opposite the passenger. So the next step is going to be to route the duct lines. And according to the instructions, it's easier to do that without the blower motor installed. Um, so I have those pre-cut to length here. And then uh, I also, where did they go? I also got some of these uh, gear wrench hose line pinch off pliers. Got these off of Amazon. I'll put links to everything in the description. Uh, I took a break in the install for a couple days to get these in uh, to get my correct hole saw size and then also to get some Honda coolant. So what I will do in the beginning of the video is put something in to tell you, you know, hey, you need these things before you start so that you don't get your machine pulled apart like I did uh, and you know what to expect going forward. Uh, so again, we're going to route the duct lines from the blower motor and then uh, I'll have to look at the instructions, but we may put the blower motor in and then uh, do the coolant lines. Okay, so I've hit something, uh, I guess, of a milestone on the install. Uh, I've got pretty much all the hard parts in place aside from the actual blower motor um, and then the uh, heater hose connections. Um, but as far as getting the switch plate in, getting the ducts ran, getting the louvers in, all that's done. So you can see right here, I've got one, two, three and then four louvers in and uh, they, they fit really nice they look really really good so they do rotate uh, you don't have to worry about unscrewing them unless you actually grab the base and twist really hard but you shouldn't have any trouble with that uh, they're kind of like the car ones where they flip up and you can change the angle if you want like to defrost on your windshield or blow directly at a passenger and then uh, not gonna be able to see that one without a little light then this is the console one. Uh, this louver over here was definitely the most challenging to get in. Uh, if you have two sets of hands, it should be no problem. Uh, but basically, the one thing to note on this side over here is that you've got to get this lifted up, and if that's where you want a second set of hands. But what I did is I just uh, took a roll of painter's tape and wedged it in here just to keep it lifted up a little bit. Then the ducting is actually pinched underneath of the, let's see here, you should be able to see it, it goes underneath of the grab bar, and it will pinch that ducting to some degree, uh, but the instructions do, they call it out to put it like that, it won't impede airflow or anything, uh, it just needs to go there so that things don't get separated uh, as they move around. So next step is going to be the blower motor and tapping into the coolant lines, and we'll test this thing out. So now I've got the uh, heater unit itself mounted in place. You can see I've got a uh, self-tapper there, and then there's also another one a little bit further over. Uh, and one important thing to note is these self-tappers are the ground for the entire unit. Uh, so if you do what I did and you're trying to test the uh, fan motor before you secure it, you're going to have to um, jump this ground wire right here or just go ahead and secure it to the frame, but that is going to serve as your ground because the fan is ground to this metal, which in turn goes through the bracket to the frame. So, uh, if we get the key turned on, 
And if we hit that, that's high mode right there. There's low. Go ahead and open everything up just to make sure that my ducks are still connected from where I've shifted things around. It feels like passenger side is good. Yep. All right, so we've got air moving. Uh, next thing I'll need to do is secure some of these wires that I had to move around just with some zip ties, and then it will be time to actually plumb into the coolant lines. So I've got a quick status update. I have one of my lines plumbed in. Get the light held there so I can do a little pointing. Okay, so this first aluminum fitting is the one that's gonna come up here up front. Um, and you can see I took about uh, a two inch piece off, like a section out of it completely just so I didn't have extra hose. What I would recommend doing is do an inch to an inch and a half to start there and see how you like it. Um, I, I didn't run short by any means, but I just would like to have a little extra lip on, on that uh, rear one, respective to the rear of the vehicle. Uh, it's going to be fine. It, it does have some extra coming out on the other side of that hose clamp, but you know, you just one of those things to pick at. Uh, but like I said, maybe an inch to an inch and a half, see how that does. Uh, get your hose clamps good and tight. And then this is a three inch piece of heater hose that comes included with the kit, uh, or excuse me, not three inch, three foot piece. Uh, they give you that measurement and that will give you plenty of extra to route it up here underneath um, the rear dash area. Let me get my light adjusted again. So within this area, it's going, so the front Y is going to connect to the top uh, coolant line up there relative to gravity, according to the instructions. And then what I did is I routed it underneath this little, uh, it's going to be hard to see, rubber area over here. You can see over here, it just kind of feeds up underneath this wiring harness. So the next thing I'm going to run the nine foot hose over here that I measured out. Again, that's what the instructions call to do. Uh, and that's the one where you have to take the center skid plate off and run it from that lower coolant line uh, from the heater core down and back to the oil cooler line. And that one is going to be this uh, heater hose back here. So we're going to tap into that one. Um, and then after satisfied with those connections, it'll be time to test it, leak test it, uh, and then get everything buttoned up. Okay, so I've got the oil cooler uh, hose plumbed in now. So I've spliced into that. And that one is going to be the lower one that mounts onto the heater radiator core. And so it's just running straight down right there, as you can see. And then it's this hose that loops back and it does follow um, the drive shaft tunnel on the way back. So bear with me a second. I'm going to show you how I've got it routed. Things may get a little close here for a second. Okay, so we're looking at the front of the machine right now. And these, of course, are the factory hard lines that are in it. So it's that black hose, the newer looking one. And then I've got it zip tied in several spots. This is the hose we're looking at right here. And it comes back. So I wanted to make sure it was out of the way of the drive shaft. It's a really bad angle. So what I did was I made sure to, let me get you a better angle so it makes a little bit of sense. There we go. Made sure to tuck it on this side of the factory hose and then kind of up against this frame and then zip tied it to it because the closest place on the drive shaft is going to be right here. Um, so we've got a, a good amount of clearance now to keep it up away from that. And then of course it just runs right back. And feeds out right here. Uh, then the, the Y that it splices into is here. Um, I, I took about one inch out. That's what the instructions call for. And then the the new hose, that was the nine foot piece. I did trim quite a bit back off of it. 
Uh, I didn't measure exactly because I did it in increments and just did a little bit until the slack seemed right. And then um, to keep it out of the way of the suspension, I just kind of loosely zip tied it here and then did another zip tie. Let's see here, if you can see it right here to this motor mount to keep things tucked back towards the, uh, the engine to keep things away from the suspension. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill the radiator up with coolant and then the reservoir back up, uh, let it run for a second to suck some of that coolant through, uh, purge the air gaps and, and get all that lined out. Uh, then do a good leak test on it and see where we're at. So this should be the last clip of the video. Uh, and this is another clip that I'm shooting uh, chronologically later in time uh, from when that last clip we just left off at was shot. Uh, but I will show you the only issue I have had with this entire kit is right there where I have the double hose clamp. So the problem that I ran into is that location had a very, very slow coolant leak. Uh, it was it was a drip, but I mean, it was still a leak nonetheless. And I, for whatever reason, just couldn't get it sealed up with the hose clamp that came with this. So I got on Amazon uh, and ordered some metric size hose clamps that are, are, they were thinner bodied so that I could get two of them on there uh, and switched out the, the thicker one that came with it. And that took care of the, of the problem and, and did the trick. So I will link to those as well. And uh, like I said, that is the only issue I've had with this entire kit.